Okay, so this is our cup so far. You can uh, play with the gradient as much as you want to make it how you want it to be. Uh, but this right now is, is my cup so far. And I see a cup, but what Adobe Animate sees is a bunch of fills and strokes, a bunch of separate objects. The edge over here is one object. I can still separate it out. Um, I see the top, you know, the, the top rim of this, but uh, Animate sees it just as a, as a curve. And then this inside part, uh, again, that's its whole separate thing and like that. So I see it as a cup, but not Animate. So it would be useful for Animate to treat it like one particular object. We can do that a couple of ways. Um, let's, um, let's do one of the ways. Select everything. So everything that you just drawn, click and drag to select the whole thing. And then we've got at the top, modify, convert to symbol. Symbols are going to be very useful as we get more advanced, especially in the animation aspect, because think about it like this. We're going to create some sort of game where there's a big star field, and I want, to, uh, I want a lot of stars and planets and things. I don't want to draw multiple stars. Maybe I want to draw one star and copy it many times. So Animate gives us the way to make a collection of lines and uh, of strokes and fills into an object, into a complete object, a symbol, and then duplicate that symbol multiple times. So you've got your cup selected, and then you go to modify, convert to symbol. And there's different kinds of symbols, and we'll get more advanced as we go on. But right now, we're going to create a movie clip symbol. You often think, well, a movie clip is all about animation. We're not animating yet, but still, we're just kind of grouping it all together as one thing. So we'll leave it as a movie clip. If we wanted to rotate this object, it would rotate from the top left corner, which uh, I might not want. I might get to rotate from the center point or from the left side where the handle is. So I'll just put it at the center for the moment. Again, it's not going to rotate, but that's what that means, the registration. From where would it rotate if we want to rotate it later? If this was part of an animation where someone picks it up and puts it to their mouth, maybe we do want it to rotate by the handle, and the closest point would be one of these two to the left. So just put it in the center for the moment. The name of the symbol is going to be currently symbol one, which is a terrible name because as I start to make more complex things and I look at the list of all my symbols, I'm going to forget what symbol three again, what symbol 33 again. So these should have meaningful names. Let's call this uh, coffee cup. One word, no spaces. No capitals, no extra special characters, just keep it simple. Now the whole point of this is because in the design that I showed before, before we started the lesson, the, the, uh, their example, if you remember, that had two cups on screen. And yes, we can do a copy and paste, but if we make a symbol out of it, we can quickly make more copies of our object. And then we can also animate them easier, and we can also add special effects and such easier. So that's why we're creating a symbol. Go ahead and click OK. All of our symbols exist in the library. Hey, the library sounds familiar. That's where we had put in all of our slides for the first assignment. Where do we go for the, for the library again? Window menu, and then library. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go up to the, to the window menu and select window library. And then in the library, we're going to see everything that we have created so far that is a symbol or anything that we've imported. So window library. And there it is, the coffee cup that we designed is there. So all then we have to do is I can drag it onto the stage and I can have multiple instances of this symbol object. We don't need that many, but I'm just putting a few of them there to show you. This is one of the powers of this, one of the great things about this particular software, the ability to make symbols and then instances of the symbol. If we get to the point then when we're making video games and stuff, we can have it that we click and pick up one cup and put it on top of another, or we click one and pour it out and fill another one in. 
they all come from the original library, but then once you drag them over, they are an instance. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm only gonna put two. So I'll delete one. And the latest one that I put out goes on top of the previous ones. So if we want to arrange it, if for whatever reason I wanted the second one to be behind the first one, we could make separate layers for each cup and then organize our layers, one layer above the other. Or we can right click one one of the objects on the screen and then we have a range and we have move it up move it down or whatever so you can have things in separate layers or i can have a layer called cups and all my cups exist there and then i can further put one on the front one on the back send it back one level all the way to the back all the way to the front I'll put send to back it moves it all the way to the back if I had two behind the third one, and I select send backwards, it sends it back one level back, and it's between two. Send to back, sends it all the way to the back. And so there's no, no big reason for this, but um, I'm just showing you right now that I want a second cup and also kind of make it smaller, put it over here somewhere, hold down shift so it stays in proportion. So let me remember what did the what did the ending thing look like? Okay, so the ending was something like that. We have one cup, we have another cup. Ooh, that one's also blurry. It's got a special effect. This is another thing that's valuable about using instances of symbols. We can colorize one differently. What if I drew one ghost? and then colorize one red, one blue, one pink, all starting from the same one. That's a time saver. I can add special effects like blur and such. So for that second cup, you can select it, go to the properties panel. So the properties of this second object can be changed independently of the first position, size, etc., or color effects. We can change some color effects here, like uh, tint. So let me change the color. So let me change the color of that object to something else. I can put it back on none to go back to normal. So I have a few things I could do here. I could make it brighter, change the tint or the color, change the transparency and alpha, change it in an advanced way. These are all color effects. This is how I can do one ghost with three different colors. I have different instances, and each one then has its own uh, tint color effect. And we also have filters. So these are a little bit more special effects. I'll put it back to none. I'll keep the color the same. But then under filter, you can add a new filter. We have here's the blur, the drop shadow, the glow, adjust colors. You can play with that if you want. It's a little bit more blurry. It's out of focus, perhaps. Depending how much blur you add, it looks like it's out of focus or it's moving. And let's say I'll add a little bit of blur. And if you no longer want that filter, you can then remove it pretty easily.
So here's our here's our design so far. Uh, we were focused on like a big graphical element, but then on the logo again, uh, we wanted um, text. So let's work on that a little bit. Let's name and lock this layer to make a new layer for text. So what should we call this layer full of cups? Cup, coffee cup. cup or anything you want, yes. So let's call it cup. Lock it, coffee cups, whatever you'd like. Go ahead and name that layer and lock it. Make a new layer. Let's call it um, text. Now, as we're making our designs and picking different tools and picking different colors, it remembers the last combination we had here. In my case, a certain um, fill with a gradient and no stroke. There's a little icon down there on the bottom left. You see that one right there? That is our reset colors. So we often are using black and white. And if you click on that, it resets it back to the back to the defaults. And then you've got this arrow right here, which switches the two colors. Sometimes you need to do that. Black on the outside, white on the inside, red, blue, whatever. So those two options there are pretty useful, right? Reset the colors or flip them around. So I want to put it back to kind of basic colors. Uh, maybe I'll go with black fill and then switch to the text tool. That little T for text that gives you access to all of the fonts that you have installed on the computer. So we're going to have the, the name of yourself, your business, whatever. Just to do this for the book at the moment, this will just be like a, a coffee a coffee shop. We'll just call this SWC Coffee Shop. So you have the full capability of, um, of fonts just like any other software. I can call this SWC Coffee Shop. Obviously, it's way too small, so we have sizes over here. We have the fonts over here. We have various options right over here to spread out how much it is between a letter, what's the color of the fill, what's the size, other stuff. Superscript, subscript, font, or character, one of the most important ones. So if I switch back to the select tool, then I can move it around. So pick any font that you like, any size that fits there. You can also use the free transform or quick transform to make a change in it that way as well. Instead of changing the font over here, you can also change it via the free transform. And then you can do really advanced things like maybe what if each individual word is its own element? And then what if each individual word, or letter that is, I can do weird things with it. I haven't shown you what I'm doing yet, but you can do something like this. What about starting with some original font and then breaking it apart to have different objects and then each object can then be further edited. What I did there was, let me just put it back. What I did there was, right now the whole text is one whole unit and it's a special object, it's a text object. Each individual letter is not its own object. 
but I can select the object and we have we can do right click break apart or control B so all of this is one thing but if I right click break apart it breaks it apart into individual things individual objects each each shape now is its own selectable thing each shape I mean each letter is its own editable font size and so forth but the better part is if you break it apart one more time then now they're no longer text objects but now they are fills if I break it apart one more time the properties change over here to show that this is no longer text it's a fill you can do everything that you can with a fill we can go to the edge and pull out this corner and move that corner you can do the free transform to, you know, the control shift distortion to do that. Ooh, look at that. It's Star Wars coffee. And so this is breaking apart your text. You type it one time out. You press control B twice or right click break apart twice. And then that breaks it apart into, into a, um, into a shape, into a fill. I want to add an outline. Remember the paint bucket fills in a color. So now I can fill in individual colors here. And if you click and hold the paint bucket, you get the ink bottle. And with the ink bottle, I can put an edge. It's too much of an edge, but I can put an edge. Nine. But with the ink bottle, which is hidden inside of the paint bucket, I can add a stroke. So I can start with plain text, break it apart to make it a different kind of object, a fill object, and then further refine it. So then I would write with a different font, a slogan. The best coffee between classes. I'm not gonna write this, I'm not gonna write the slogan, you get the idea. But for your assignment, we still have a little bit more to do, then we'll get to the lab time for you to work on your assignment. I have a couple more little things. For your assignment, you're gonna make your own logo, make some kind of shape. You can make, you know, a coffee cup or something. You can make, remember when I combined two moons together and it came out to an interesting shape? What about something like that? You're going to have the name of yourself or your business. You can totally make it up. You can change it throughout the course of the semester if you want. You'll have a slogan or tagline, one sentence that explains what your business is. But we have a little bit more to do. And then by 4 o'clock, we'll do the lab time for you to do your version. The last thing that I want to do, or the next thing that I want to do, is um, sometimes we have these various um, shapes to um, just create more visual interest and then transparency and stuff. So if you manage to create some sort of text like this, I'm going to lock this layer and save it and make a new layer. So lock that layer, save it, new layer, we'll call this shapes, well let's call this actually pen shapes just to be obvious. I'm going to introduce a tool here that um, most of you will hate and then the rest of you will dislike. Um, this is a, a very powerful but difficult to use tool called the pen tool. It is a way to precisely make straight lines and curved lines perfectly, but it just does not behave like any tool that most people are used to. 
most people are used to, okay, the brush tool, I draw how I want, and there it is. The uh, pencil tool, it's similar to that, although this one makes fills. Um, this other tool uh, is more complex because it, um, first of all, it's hidden. And it looks like a little uh, nib of a calligraphy pen, and it behaves in a completely different way. Our first intro to the our first intro to the uh, to this pen tool will just be to make some very simple shapes. Um, but these but this same tool can be used to make very complex things. So if I select that pen tool, if I put it into my uh, into my toolbox here, I get this new tool, and it doesn't work by clicking and dragging. What I get is a, is a weird line. Okay, so I let it go. And then I click and drag somewhere else, and it puts another point, and then it fills in the line. And I click and drag somewhere else, and it makes this other curved line. So the pen tool is working by either clicking one time to make straight lines or clicking and dragging to make curved lines. So the tool does two different things depending. You, if you just click one time, let me undo this. If you click one time and then click another time and another time, okay, it makes perfectly straight lines wherever you put your points. But if instead you click and drag and this takes some getting used to, do I drag to the side? Do I drag up? Do I drag diagonal? For the moment, just practice with it to see what it does. If I click and drag straight up, and then make another point and click and drag straight down, the previous curve becomes, you know, it goes in, in a certain direction. If I, if with that second point, instead I clicked and dragged to the right, the curve is something like that. So each of the different directions is going to create this curve in a different way. If I click and drag, if I then just click one time, it'll try to make a connection, but the previous part that I clicked was a curve. But after I then click on the next part, that's a straight line. And I click on the next part and drag, that's a curve. So I could be making something like this. I could be making like an interesting curved shape that is organic how I want. There's some just simple click, click, straight line, click, click, straight line, click and drag, curved line. And what it's doing is it's creating a um, stroke, which I can use the paint bucket to fill it in. And yes, this will, this will take practice. Right now, we're just doing totally simple, weird, random shapes. But you can use this to make completely perfect designs. Because when we revisit the tool, it's all about moving these control points. Move this just amount perfectly so that the curve is perfect. And then instead of this being a hard edge, it's a little curved edge. I'm going to deselect. And if I fill it in with the paint bucket color, and then rearrange it on my layer order here. Um, my pen shape is at the very top, so it covers everything. But if I put it behind everything, I'm making some sort of shape that follows some sort of design that I made. Maybe I don't want that stroke, but maybe I want the shape. So I can double click the edge and delete. I only get the, the curve. I kind of did it fast. Let me delete it and do it again. For the, as, for the assignment, I want you to give it a shot to try this pen tool. And again, most of you are going to hate it at the beginning, and some of you will dislike it, and it'll be amazing if someone does like it. <laughs>
almost no one, no one likes it in the beginning. But the point of this tool is it will eventually lead you to make some perfect designs. And all we really need is like to make some random curves or a couple of straight lines here and there. But I'm trying to create some sort of closed shape. I'm going outside of the design. I'm trying to create a closed shape so I can fill it in with the paint bucket to have some sort of design, some sort of curves and such in the logo. Once I've got a closed shape, I can add a fill. And because fills and strokes are independent, I can double click to select the stroke and delete it, and I only get the fill. And then this, this shape that I made, I can continue to go with my selection tool to further refine it. I can select it and then with the select tool hit the smooth. Maybe it wasn't perfectly smooth. I don't like these like little bumps right here. I can select it and then hit smooth and it will further smoothen it for me. So I, I pressed smooth like two or three times and that curve which had like a little bump now I kind of like that curve a little better. So this particular object, that shape, I can copy it, I can duplicate it, I can change the color, I can turn it into a symbol, put another instance of it, change the opacity, or change the transparency and color and such. But this is how I might further create this design. I have like a little kind of a curved shape. And to practice like I did with the, um, with the cup, I can turn it into a symbol and then put more instances on the screen with a different tint, a different filter, a different um, opacity. So I'll try that. I made that shape. I'll convert it into a symbol. Anyone remember where in the menu I go to turn things into symbols? Modify and then um, convert to symbol, yeah. So modify, convert to symbol. You can call this whatever you want. I'll just call it um, curve. All that curve, I will then now get that object in the library and I can drag another copy onto the, onto the scene, onto the, the, can, uh, the canvas that is. So from my library I can drag another copy. The second copy I can resize, I can shrink, I can go to the properties and maybe change the color effect to a different tint. I can then um, continue to play with this separate shape. I've changed the, the modes there for the colors. I can then change blending modes. I can make the, the different uh, colors kind of blend into each other different ways. Go to filters to change how transparent it is. So alpha is the fancy term for transparency. So one thing I could do is I've got a separate instance of the same object. Now that has some alpha so I can see through it. So 
So I have more that I can do, of course, but for today's lecture, it was about kind of exploring these various tools using basic shapes to make advanced shapes. We started with simple squares and circles for that cup, and how it's a cup. And this other shape over here, I'm not expecting anything too fancy, but if you can use the pen tool more effectively, that's great. And plus some text, we're putting together some kind of logo. It's very open-ended about what you want to do. I'm not um, asking like specific things that way, but remember, check the rubric on Canvas that do you have a pen shape, yes or no? Okay, you get points. Do you have the the name and the slogan you don't have the slogan okay not full points do you have the other shape in there so ch always check the rubric to see what the what the grades what the points are to get the best grade and on a technical level if i followed all of the rubric and i turn this in that's an a design wise do i like it no that's an f plus but the um i'm not going to grade a lot of times on uh, on, uh, you know, uh, the, aesthetics? the aesthetics of things. I'm going to grade, because that's hard to grade. I might like that um, Jackson Pollock painting and you don't, or you like that Salvador Dali painting and you don't. That's fine. But what I'm looking for is does it have the text, does it have the slogan, does it have the curves, does it have the this and that. So always check the rubric to see what the full points are. That way you're not surprised about what grade you got. Um, and I will try to put aside my dislike for a style and only focus on the on the technical aspect of things. So um, I think this might be a good stopping point right here. We've covered a lot of things, and we're going to give you some time to explore on further working on these things. If you'd like to stay for the lab time and then continue to practice this, uh, if you want to start the Canvas thing, you can. Uh, if you want to continue the work elsewhere, that's fine. Remember, all of these videos are being recorded. You can watch them again up on the, on the website. I'll put the link in a moment. And this work that you did here, this is just for your practice. You don't have to turn it in or anything. You have to do your version of it. And then when you upload it to Canvas, um, that's when you'll be graded on Sunday. So there's no extra discussion board this week, just a, just a creative assignment. Any general questions on anything we did today? OK, so. Um, We'll end the lecture at this point, and if you want to do lab time, we'll be here for that.